Hey everybody, it's John from our Hodgepodge Homestead. Today is uh, November 15th. It's opening day of Michigan's deer season for a shotgun where I live. And um, I just didn't go today. Terrible, terrible storm. I'm really glad I didn't. The rain is terrible, the wind is terrible. Anyway, um, I'm going to show you how we here at the Hodgepodge make our artisan bread. It's four ingredients. And what you're going to start off with <clears throat> is this regular old all-purpose flour. Hey, Pete, that was on there pretty good. Um, you're going to want three cups of all-purpose flour. And this is a real forgiving recipe, so you don't have to be totally precise. I use a half cup because I can get it in here easier. And um, I just kind of shake it around there until it fills up the half cup. So there's one. I gotta count here or I'll mix up. There's two. And there's three. Three cups of flour. <clears throat> You're also gonna want uh, one and a half teaspoons of salt. There's uh, a half. Here we go. There's one, there's two, and there's three. I hope I didn't get any rice in there because we'll keep rice in our salt shaker. <laughs> if we did, there might be a little crunchy piece in this bread. Okay, and then you want one fourth teaspoon of instant yeast. We use the, the Fleischmann's original yeast. Um, you can use the, the um, active dry or the instant. It doesn't matter. Like I said, this is a very, very forgiving recipe. Again, you want one fourth of a teaspoon. And just kind of sprinkle it all around. <clears throat> I got this recipe and learned how to do this from a YouTube channel called Artisan Bread with Steve. This guy's amazing when he makes bread. It's all super easy, super simple. And I just decided to share with you what I learned from him today. Believe me, I'm not a baker. This doesn't come from my head. Okay, so you want to kind of get in here and mix your dry ingredients up a little bit first so that they're all incorporated. Just mix it a couple times. And then you want to come in with 12 ounces of cool tap water. I pour it all in at one time. And then you want to mix it up. This isn't going to be a real, like, I guess they almost call it a wet dough. It's, it's going to be, you know, sloppy. I usually use the number four Pyrex bowl in these nesting bowls, but I didn't today. I'll show you why in a minute. But anyway, you just want to mix this till you don't see any dry flour. And I usually knock the uh, flour off this spatula so I can um, just make sure I'm getting it all mixed. Pull it off the sides of your bowl. And you can see it. I don't know if you can see it, but you see it kind of starting to come together. There's no kneading. You don't have to knead this dough at all. Again, I'm going to take it off my spatula. And once you get it to a point where you can handle it with your hands a little bit, you want to get in there and Make sure you got it all mixed together. <clears throat> Sometimes your hands are your best tools. Yeah, it's a wicked day here in Michigan today. We had storms last night. The wind was coming in from the south so strong, water was coming in one of our windows. So I definitely am going to have to get on that once everything dries up. Throw some caulk in there. Okay. Mixing is done. 
Let me get my hands washed off real quick. Yeah, and the thing is, <clears throat> it already tastes like bread. So, what we're gonna do, again, I forgot something. You have to proof this bread, so this is basically, it's basically mix the bread up today, cook it tomorrow. So I'm gonna cover this bowl with some saran wrap. <clears throat> Put it on pretty tight. Now I'm gonna let this sit overnight and it will double its size, maybe even triple its size. And so I'm going to put this in a nice warm spot next to your stove or on your stove or I actually put mine in my furnace room. So that's all there is to that. Now, <clears throat> this is why I didn't use my big bowl because I made some of this yesterday and I want to show you the difference. I made this yesterday, probably what, noon, one o'clock, something like that. And it is way double its size. So what I'm gonna do, is throw a little bit of flour down here on my countertop. And I'm gonna take this out, put the flour on my spatula here. And knock it out of the bowl. You can tell that that the yeast did its job. You see what I mean by a real sloppy dough? It's perfect. So I'm just going to fold this over just a couple times, like I said, not kneading it. This one I have, I want to have flour over the whole, the whole loaf. Just making it round. <clears throat> I'm kind of rolling it under itself. Again, but only for about an hour. I'm going to set a timer for an hour. I'm going to let that rise for an hour. Halfway into that hour, I'm going to set my oven at 400 degrees. At the same time I set my oven at 400 degrees, I'm going to put my cooking vessel, which is a cast iron Dutch oven, in the oven at the same time. Because I'm going to cook that bread in this Dutch oven and it will be 400 degrees also. So, we'll be back when we get to that point. All right, everybody. So, uh, my oven is up to 400 degrees. My Dutch, cast iron Dutch oven is also at 400 degrees, so I'm gonna take that out. In the pan. I don't put any um, paper in mine. You don't have to. It isn't going to stick. But just remember, one time I forgot the pan was hot 
and it's 400 degrees hot. So remember your mitts. Okay, I'm gonna put it in. I'm gonna set a timer for 30 minutes. Remember, 30 minutes at 400 degrees, and then I'll take the lid off for three to five minutes, depending on how crusty you like the top of your bread, because it gets too crusty. It um, hurts the roof of my mouth when I chew it. So anyway, I'll be back with you as soon as this bread comes out of the oven. Well, actually, I'll be back with you when I take the lid off and show you where we're at. So about 30 minutes, we'll be right with you. All right, guys, so my timer went off. It's been in the oven at um, 400 degrees for 30 minutes. So I'm gonna take the lid off. And I'll show you guys what it looks like right now. <laughs> Look at that deliciousness. Now we'll get this top to brown for three to five minutes. I'll be back with you when it's done. All right guys, so I'm back with you. <clears throat> I actually went 10 minutes longer. Well, not 13 minutes, but I did uh, 10 minutes with the lid off. And um, I think we're gonna be looking pretty good right now. So let me get down here. I'm, first, I'm gonna shut the stove off because I forget those things. Oh yeah. That is looking mighty fine. Now what you wanna do, and hopefully it happens, Look at that, fell right out. I'm gonna flip this right over on a rack. Now check that out. Is that not a fine loaf of artisan bread right there? Four ingredients. It takes less than five minutes to mix up and basically 45 minutes in the oven. Try it. If you like it, hit that thumbs up button for me. Like and subscribe our videos, and come back and watch the next one. Because as you know, here at the HodgePodge Homestead, we love making artisan bread, and you should too. See you all later.